The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act that was passed in 1996 changed the face of healthcare forever. Nurses call it HIPAA, and it affects our lives every single day. Our presentation has to do with the top 10 violations of HIPAA and how we can avoid it in our everyday practice. What is HIPAA? HIPAA is Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. HIPAA is a federal law. HIPAA establishes uniform rules for protecting health information and privacy. HIPAA rules were invented to balance between the flow of information while protecting the privacy of patients. The patient has the right to request access for health information, request to amend your health information, request restrictions to information sharing, request accountability of disclosures. HIPAA's protection. Who does HIPAA protect and how does HIPAA protect? Who does HIPAA protect? Well, HIPAA protects your individual health information and they also protect your identifiable health information known as IIHI. This can include your name or partial name, your address or zip code, social security number and birth date, phone number, diagnosis, employer, relatives, and even brain information. How does HIPAA protect? Well, HIPAA requires covered entities to implement security measures to protect improper disclosure of health information. These entities must set limits on user access to individuals' health information and must implement training programs for employees on how to protect your health information. The HIPAA Privacy Rule protects patients from nursing staff or other healthcare personnel sharing any personal information with anyone other than the patient, persons authorized by the patient, or a person directly involved in the patient care. The following slides show several short video clips of ways that we as healthcare workers could possibly break the HIPAA code. this app. Look, I can keep my entire census on my iPad and that way I can just put my information and print it out and then I don't have to, you know, hand write out report for the next nurse. That's pretty cool, but yeah. make sure you delete it before you leave though. Oh no, you know what, I'm going to take it home because just in case I think of something I forgot or, you know, I might have the same assignment tomorrow, so I'm just going to take it home, but just wanted to show you real quick. Oh, okay. Okay. As demonstrated in the previous slide, using patient information on personal computers and taking it home is a HIPAA violation. Patients' health information must be secure against threats to inadvertent disclosure, integrity, This skit presented losing backup disks or portable drives with patient health information. Adding password protection and encrypted files increases security protection. They're going to die when they see this. We're having our class reunion in like uh, a couple months. Miss Adams, our high school bio teacher, room 232, Woodgate Hospital. In this video, the nurse exposed patient data by posting onto her Facebook page. So what do we do to safeguard against this from happening? Never post or tweet or blog about your patients. Don't discuss medical conditions, as generalizations could be formed to give away a person's identity. Remember, if you wouldn't say it in an elevator, don't put it online. 
And lastly, don't exchange personal data. You should never mix your personal life and your work life. In this clip, the nurse asks another nurse for access to their dashboard information. By doing this, the nurse is then able to access information she may have not been privy to. So how do we prevent this? Never share your sign-on information. Also never write passwords down. Change passwords regularly and use a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. If the program asks you to remember your password, do not say yes. If you think your password has been compromised, you should always report it immediately. Yeah, don't worry, I'll fax that information for you. Okay. Mr. Andrews. Face sheet. Neon effects, it's the insurance company compensation. Oh, here's the number. Wait a second. That's not the right number. No, 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 no. Oh my god. I just sent it to the employer. Wrong fast number prevention. Confirm that fast numbers are correct before sending information to prevent wrong delivery. Make use of cover sheet, sealed envelopes for delivery. Make use of encryption key, which makes it impossible to read confidential information. This safeguards fast transmissions that might be sent to a wrong number. That's me. I'm his niece. I would like to know about this, this um, treatment plan. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. This is his sheet here. What's your name? Um, Mary Jane. Mary Jane? I don't see Mary Jane's name on here. Here's the name. I'm in the Okay. I'm about to tell them. Okay. Let's look at the uh, authorization forms. I'm sorry. Uh, oh! You can go ahead and tell her. I can tell her everything? Yeah, oh, okay. Ways to prevent incomplete authorization. Only the patient or personal representative has the right to access patient's health information. Information privacy form must be completely filled out during admission. Personal information cannot be given to any entity without written authorization from patient. Patients can add and amend an incomplete personal health information in a written request to the healthcare provider to avoid ideal representative confusion.
babe. You'll never believe who's here. Makes his hands. So, high school. The nurse in the video is making a huge error in violation of the HIPAA code. We can never text our family or our friends about a patient that we're taking care of. They're not directly involved in the patient's care, and therefore it's a violation of the privacy rules. Sending a regular text with patient information in it is a violation of the HIPAA code because most networks are not secure or encrypted, and there's no way to allow the receiver to verify the sender's identity. The very so bad way to avoid this violation of the we must therefore make sure that the network protection is secure and encrypted. And in some hospitals, nurses are expected to check doctors with questions. But we have to make sure that that network is secure so that we can honor our patients by honoring our patients. Um, yes, mobile check please. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm calling for Mr. Smith. Oh, his social is 06058-2714. Yes. Finish. Yeah, and his birth date is 12-14-32. Yeah, it's to rule out TV. Oh, you can be here today? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sometimes incidental disclosures of personal health information will happen during everyday practice. But what is an incidental exposure of PHI? According to the University of Chicago, while reasonable precautions should be used to avoid sharing patient information with those not involved in the patient's care, it is possible that minor amounts of information may be disclosed to people near where the patient care is being delivered. This is an incidental disclosure. The HIPAA laws state that as long as reasonable efforts are made to minimize incidental disclosure, sharing patient information where it could be overheard is okay. But what are reasonable measures? First, refusing to discuss a patient in front of another patient or family member. Using a quiet voice to discuss PHI over the phone. And avoiding conversations about patients in public areas. The nurse in the video is not using reasonable measures to reduce the incidental disclosure of personal health information. She's using a very loud voice to discuss sensitive information over the phone. So how can we do our part? Basically, it's common sense. If you're discussing personal health information, make sure that you're using a quiet voice or you're seeking out a private area to discuss it. Uh, yes, this is for Adam Thompson. Yes. And insurance claim number for uh, Medicare is 070 42 97188. Yep, and his birthday is 11 12 41. That's all you needed? Okay, alright, thank you. Release of the wrong patient's information. Although it may seem obvious, the release of the incorrect patient information can occur through careless mistakes. If your facility contains records for two patients with the same name, your staff must be trained to correctly file all medical records and release documents only for the authorized patient. With the use of the red name tags in front of charts, upon admission, to help notify staff members to recognize patients with the same name. I'm going to go through my census out, okay? okay. Um, what was it? It was beginning. Uh, oh! Gary, 
Improper disposal of patients' records. Paper patients' health information should never have been thrown in the regular trash can. Placing PHI in trash bins or dumpsters are not a secure method of disposing of PHI. Failing to shred patient information before disposal could lead to dangerous consequences. Proper disposal of patient's record. Before PHI can be thrown out, it should be made indecipherable by shredding or burning. Another alternative is to hire a reputable company to destroy the record. Placing small bins at each workstation clearly labeled PHI for proper disposal only. Do not trash. This will prevent information from accidentally ending up in the trash. Conclusion Most of us believe that our medical and other health information is private and should be protected and we want to know who has this information. HIPAA gives you the right over your health information and sets rules and limits on who could look at and receive your health information. It regulates the use of to all forms of individuals protected health information, whether electronic, written, or oral.